our particular first and HELOC is a, a 10 year draw period with a 20 year repayment. What that means is that it functions as a HELOC, as an open-ended line of credit for 10 years. And at the end of 10 years, any remaining balance that you have converts into a 20 year fixed rate mortgage. And so what that means is, you know, an amortized mortgage that facilitates the pay down over the next 20 years. So if you follow that progression, your loan is paid off after that next 20. It also means there's no balloon payment. Um, so a lot of times HELOCs will have a 10 year draw with a balloon payment or some other option after that. Yeah, the, I guess we can, the rate itself, um, the rate is a, it's a variable rate product. Um, and the way that mortgages, uh, you know, um, adjustable rate mortgages, as well as adjustable rate HELOCs, the way that they usually calculate their, their interest uh, for, you know, for the product is it uses a base index and it adds a margin to it. So the ones that the example people are used to hearing is, you know, prime plus one. So what that means is yeah. you look at the index, the prime index, right? And you add one point to it uh, to calculate your rate. Uh, our, I guess, algorithm is we use the six month T bill, six month treasury bill plus 4.5. So what we do is, you know, we look at the six month treasury bills through the bond market, uh, the United States treasury bond market. And we just add four and a half to it. So that's how that's that's how it's calculated. Gotcha. So the, what is what is the expected <clears throat> rate that average client should get approved for in 2022, knowing that the rate could change? But in 2022, as we record this video, what is the expected rate uh, I, I can, you know, expect? So I don't necessarily know about that. But what I can speak to is the the work or the research that I've done to try and or better understand average. how the yeah how the t-bill works right so so right now we're at about you mentioned four four point seven five well, right now we're at about five percent so the six month t-bill is at about 0.5 percent so if we do the math you take 4.5 plus five, uh, four and a half right which gives us around five percent mm -hmm. um i i do know that the feds have announced that they plan on increasing rates a couple increasing. times yeah um and the, the feds are the ones who are going to be in control of your bond rates and so i do i do know they've said that what what i've done is to look at what this rate would have done uh from 2010 until COVID, because right after 2010 we were in a recession uh we're just just getting out of out of a recession kind of like we are now and so i looked at that uh for the next nine basically the next 10 years so from 2010 until 2019 as the economy grew the six month t-bill increased uh, it capped at about seven uh, and then dipped so uh, what i usually do when i use, when i project rates using a calculator that we that we use to to kind of run scenarios i usually just use a rate of 5.75 or six percent that's an attempt to try and be conservative and realistic with the rate so right now we're at five percent i would say over the next year maybe an average of 5.125 maybe 5.25 percent something like that okay so we can expect that rate to pop probably go up a little bit more like you said you can i one, five, i would um my i i don't have a master's in finance i'm not a stockbroker but from what i understand you know bond rates generally increase in line with the strength of the economy so mm -hmm. as the economy gets better I would anticipate the rate getting higher. Um, and we talk about that too, right? We, we run a lot of scenarios, a lot of exercises with people Got it. so so they can see how important is the rate, right? Is it something we need to fear a whole lot or is it not? And so, uh, you know, the reality is this isn't a mortgage. The best way for me to think about it is it's not necessarily fair for us to assume that factors that affect mortgage, that affect mortgages a certain way are gonna affect it this way as well. So now let's go into cost. What does it Perfect. cost for me to obtain this type of product through first sale? Yeah. So I think a lot of people hear HELOC, right? And they expect that they think of an additional line of credit on top of an existing mortgage, right? That would be your second lien HELOC. The reality is this is a different, this isn't that, right? The transaction is different even. So this transaction is actually a first lien mortgage or product that pays off your current mortgage or first lien HELOC, right? Your, your first mortgage it replaces um, your so mortgage. Got it. It replaces your mortgage, right? So it's it's actually equivalent. The transaction is equivalent to a a refi, right? So in terms of the work that has to be done, right? It's the same as a refi. 
So the line items cost-wise are going to be the same. Uh, however, it is substantially less expensive than a full-out conventional FHA refi. So th there's usually four, about four buckets of, of fees that I sort of think about. There's the bank fees, you've got an appraisal, you've got a title, and then you've got state fees. So the only bank fee is a flat $1,495 origination fee. So $1,495. Okay. Yep. The appraisal is usually about $450, uh, $500, depending on the market and, and uh, at that time. So the uh, so that's the appraisal fee. The um, what was the appraisal fee? About $450, $500. Got it. Title fees and state fees. Th those are a little bit harder for me to hard quote uh, because they are straight third party fees, and they tend to fluctuate based on where you live and price point. Uh, title fees consist of usually, you know, you're going to have a, a closing fee, You'll, there'll be title insurance, and then there'll also be some, like a title search, something like that. And then the, what is it, the... What would be the range fees? So that you've seen um, on average? Doesn't have to be accurate. Maybe $800 to $1,000. Okay. So what what I've done, to be honest, to, to avoid trying to quote <laughs> title fees, in state fees is we took an average of all the loans that we've done, all the first and HELOCs that we've done. And I, I did this because I wanted to give people something, right? Um, and again, I, I, because people want to have a, some semblance of how much it's going to cost, right? So, uh, you know, we've got the bank fee that we know, the appraisal fee, um, the average fee for all the loans that we've done, then that includes bank fee, appraisal fee, title, and state fees, ends up being right about $3,500 total. Okay, what the was the only, state fee? average so so state fees so all states are going to have a recording fee that's anywhere from 85 dollars to 300 dollars to record with the state there are some states that have what's called a transfer tax and this is why this is more difficult because a, a transfer tax is a tax that's that's placed on any real estate transaction including refinances so just to give you an idea of, of the how much it, it changes it swings like new york state their transfer tax on real estate transactions is like ten thousand dollars. It's bonkers. Florida, right, is is second, and they're about three thousand, right? Tennessee is, you know, eight hundred dollars. Georgia is, you know, three hundred dollars. And then there are a lot of states that just don't have it. So that's a really big swing, right? So it, depending on the state that you're in, that can affect it a lot. So what I wanted to do again, the the average. $3,500. The reason why I say that is because I want to give people something when they ask. Realistic um, expectation, right? Right. Um, you know, and so, you know, if you're in an expensive state, it's going to be higher than that, right? If you have a $900,000 loan, right, it's going to be more expensive than that.